Welcome, Lars, to Metalidium Pages. It's a really, really pleasure to talk with you. For the second time, we spoke three years ago about the last album for White Void, your personal yeah, project. Right. But just at that time, was just at that time was just a written interview. Now we're face to face. So, uh, so how are you? How was the band? How's Bordagar now to prepare everything for the Mexico Metal Fest? Yeah, we're so looking forward to coming. You know. It's been uh, six years now since yeah, the yeah. last time we visited, visited uh, Mexico. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's like drugs, you know. You need the you need the Mexican audience. You guys have such an energy when when uh, when we play. So uh, it's finally to, to uh, it's nice to finally go back and uh, get another fix of that fantastic audience energy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So. How was uh how was how was how would you compose your set list for well for your for for this com in presentation in Mexico Metal Fest because Bornaga yeah. didn't has uh well he didn't didn't have a good promotion for the last album here in Latin America the pandemic the pandemic's appearance in the war etc etc a lot of things happen yeah well we have a lot of albums so I guess we have to 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 try and pick you know. Uh, a little bit from from um, like every uh, era of of Borknagar. something something older, something newer, uh, something fast, something slow. Um, yeah, we're we're looking at a set list that uh, has a little bit of everything for for everyone. I hope. Uh, and of course, I mean, there are some songs that we always need to play live that people expect us. To play so you're gonna get the hits as well and um yeah i i hope we've composed a, a set list that's gonna work well for you guys i think we have <laughs> okay okay now we're talking about the a bit a little about the history of the band in general next year the band accomplished 30 years of existence and because the band was founded in 19, 1994 by austin in that in at that time now you are preparing. I, I I saw the news that you are preparing a new album to release next year, obviously through Century Media. So, but perhaps with the Mexican Metal Fest, you are preparing something special for the first thirty years of existence of Bornagar. Well, it's <clears throat> it's a weird thing to think about that that we've been around for thirty years. It yes. it sure makes us feel old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At the, at the same time, it's kind of nice because um, it's it's good to look back at, at all the things that that we've done, and still feel that we have a lot left. You know, we we have a lot of things left that we want to to do, that we want to to create, that we want to accomplish. So I think. I, I think the thing that we're gonna look for <clears throat> in 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 the setlist and and in the show that we we prepare for the for the Mexico Metal Fest is j just to make sure that the the show reflects the the um, the whole history of the band. You know, we always meet people, you know, when we go out and play, <clears throat> and people have they have different favorite albums, they have different favorite eras of the yeah. band. Uh, and um, it's it's hard to please everyone, you know. But at least we we're gonna make an honest try, you know. Try and compose a set list, and at least make sure that the way that we conduct ourselves on stage and the the energy that we give into our show is the very best that we can possibly do. Because if 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 there's one audience that that deserves that from us, uh, it's it's the Mexican audience. <laughs> okay okay well other aspects one uh we we're talking as i said as i mentioned we were talking about a little history of the band but you enter in the band in at the end of the 90s when then you start become for me you this with you change completely the subject or the direction of the battle of quintessence because i love quintessence in many ways quintessence and pre-seasons origin it was a great album well, i'm a huge fan of the born since the beginning so for you when you enter the band, uh, these things that change the sound since the first two albums to and starts in a different way than you know, path with you in Quizden Sense. And now with and Trees or True North are in this kind of in this kind of new wave. Uh, do you have something to do about or do you have to, to talk about this? Uh, for me, it's a relevant change in the discography career of Bornagar. Yeah, well, I think um, w one of the things that you see that happens uh, around 98, 99, when, when I enter the band is there's a bit more emphasis on, on melody. Uh, I mean, on the melodic side. 
so the, the the way that the keyboards were weaved into the music then um sort of lifts it lifts it up and makes it um bigger grander uh and i think that's also one of the things that we've been developing the last couple of albums is more of that melodic side i mean we still have like one foot pretty well planted in in black metal because that's where we come from and we have that tenacity with that kind of vocals and the the, the blast beats and all of that but on the other hand <clears throat> me and vortex we work a lot on vocal arrangements we work a lot on the melodic side as a contrast to uh the rough and the hard side so uh i think um that's probably a continuation of of the focus that at least i had when i came into the band which was to lift up the the melodic side without sort of pushing out uh the the black metal side i think we now contain both both things and i know that a lot of people uh, I, I see discussions about what what kind of genre is is borknagar uh, connected to and everyone has a different opinion you know yeah. Some people say black metal, some say Viking metal, some say folk metal, some say progressive metal, and then you get progressive black folk metal, all kinds of different, <laughs> yes. you know, constellation of those things. And I think <clears throat> that that's kind of cool. That just means that we've we've managed to to make sort of a mixture of of many different styles, which feel like they kind of belong together, and people connect to different sides of the music um so uh, so yeah uh, i mean these days i i think we um we have a bigger emphasis on on the melodic side of composition than we had uh in the beginning and i think that started uh um in a big way from quintessence and, and onwards hmm. Okay, well, all of them are, I remember when I hear for the first time Winter Tries, because it's an album that really, really love. Even uh, when you play in, 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 in a tour in Latin America, uh, I played, I, but I, I was in the opening band in Peru at that time, remember? I remember that opening to you in Peru. Yeah. We, we are the only band in Peru. <laughs> I remember that, and re I remember that when Winter Tries is a great album, have a great reviews. And then after that, Winter Sword decided to leave the band. So then you then you create True North with you and ICS Vortex to create the sono. So how 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 do you take the or how do you so how do you take the the the, the departure of Winter the Winter song when Winter sort created what uh, uh, other other textures with the voices as you mentioned a few minutes ago. So how do you how this how this retirement affected the band even True North received like great comments, great reviews, etc. Yeah, well, uh, I think it's it's an organic process, and I I think we we knew when we when we made Winter Thrice that that was going to be the last album that that Wintersorg did with us, and we also talked about that on beforehand, uh, and we talked about the fact that he couldn't play live, uh, and there were a lot of issues where he couldn't he couldn't um, he couldn't fly. Because he had an accident, so he he um, destroyed something having to do with his ear, so he can't take the pressure of, of a flight. And he lives in the northern part of Sweden, so we had a whole lot of different logistic problems with him. When we recorded Winter Thrice, we hadn't we we hadn't met him in three years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we hadn't seen him face to face in three years, so we all knew that okay, we had to do something about that, and um, it was it was about uh, about time for for that change to take part. Um, and we um, we just talked about that in in a very nice way, all of us, and we just decided all together that, that this is a good way of doing it. We're doing this album, and we're going out uh, on a high note with with Winter Sorg as a vocalist. Um, and then he will step down, um, and we're still good friends. I mean, we talk to him uh, regularly still, um, but it it was uh, it was the right moment to do that. Um, and luckily, I mean, we we have a lot of talent in the band, and we we have a lot of people who can do different things. So it was a pretty natural process to to sort of morph that into what the band became on on True North, and also what the new album that's coming out next year is going to be a continuation of. 
Um, I mean, changes occur. Changes occur in, in bands. Changes occur in life. So I guess more than anything, you just have to be prepared to deal with all the change that, that comes your way. And I think we did that in the best manner that, that we could and in a very respectful way as well. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I love Andreas or Vito Sorg as a, as a person and uh, I love him as a band colleague. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that we could sort of end that era uh, in a very sort of respectful manner um, together. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, other detail about the, uh, especially at the album when you compose is when since, since Quintessence, you decide to put a one word in your album, Quintessence, Empiricisms, Epic, Original, Universe, and etc. Just, just Winter Tries is the only album that has two words and with True North. So, Why did why did you decide at, at that time to create an album with one word and now you decide completely the formula to create an album with two words, perhaps a special meaning? Yeah, I no, I think just it it's uh, it's just a matter of of where I'm at at creatively, and the, when I write music, um, I I don't I don't sit down and write specifically for one band. I just sit, sit down and I write music and then when the song is more or less done <clears throat> i listen to it and i think well this is a this is a white void song or this is a solar song or in in these respects this i'm pretty sure this is a borknagar song so <clears throat> um th there's no there's no system to this it's just okay i have a couple of songs we discuss okay that's going to work that's going to work Let's record this one as well and we'll see, you know, what goes where. We usually always record more songs than we put on the album. Um, so the last couple of albums, I've had two or three songs. Um, on the new one, uh, I have a couple of songs as well. I think it's just like a natural uh, progression. And if I have if I have more songs, then I just bring them to the table and we just try them out and discuss. And if they work, They work then we record them it's it, it's not more complicated than that mm. well now border has to has all, your own formula it's normal because we have the band has more than 30 well will be 30 years next year you have a great album in your career obviously the bands but the, well, the, the people like me are waiting for the next album what 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 can you expect for the band etc etc and uh, with this well obviously the band is I'll continue pressure, continue pressure the sound you achieved since this since the one since the nights, obviously. But at the same time, you tr you trying to not get outside of the of the of the of the sound that you create in the night. It's normal because you create your own formula. So so why do you, why do you keep the same formula, but at the same time no, at the same time you try to push in your boundaries with with mm -hmm. new elements with 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 more things, but that's well, man with more new things. Yeah, I think the main thing is um, to to try and keep the same core of the music. To, to just try and sit down and think, okay, but what's what's the thing that the music springs out from, you know? Uh, and I think usually that's that's an attitude more than anything else, an attitude or a feeling or an idea. And with with Borknagar, uh, I think the um, the the main you know idea the point that everything uh, comes out from is that uh, the nordic spirit you know uh, the the feeling of the north the sound of the north northern landscapes uh, the northern melodies that we have that heritage sort of inherent in in the music so i think even though the expression of borknagar has has developed a lot since the first album Um, I, I think we can pretty safely say that um, the spirit of the band and, and like the basic vibe of the band is the same on the new albums as it is on, on the first albums, even though like the basic expression can be pretty different. The, the first album is a much more raw production. It has much more... Uh, Um, leanings into like the, the classical second wave Norwegian black metal uh, vibe, but it still has that, you know, melodic sense and those acoustic parts and those things that connect us to that sort of what I call the Nordic spirit. Uh, and I think that's, that's what we keep on, on each and every album. Mm, great, great. Well, 
talking about other 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 topics it's normally then as you can see now there is a lot of bands are releasing albums eps singles etc and a lot of things happen now there's black metal with a lot of fusion as you mentioned i some reviewers said that you play progressive experimental biking yeah. <laughs> it's very confusing sometimes so like uh, so now what is your perspective as a musician how do you see the how do you see now the how do you see now the metal movement around the world is are we still living in a great world to create metal or perhaps too saturated to create now metal and as as an as nergal said to in in one interview now the new bands that have to to get away from the music business and take other side because it's too saturated now I think um, when it comes to creativity, we're at a good place. I think metal is at a good place because now we have an uh, an environment where um, th there's room to experiment. You know, there's room to experiment in any direction, and people can 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 base their music on whatever they're preoccupied with or what whatever heritage they have themselves. I think we see a lot of bands these days that don't go to to Norway for inspiration, for instance. They go to their own culture for inspiration, and they often they can use the metal as a framework, but they fill it with um, their own culture and their own ideas that that spring out from that culture, which I think is a great thing. Um, also, you get a lot of bands that let themselves be inspired by other cultures and other people, but they make their own, you know, twist to it. Uh, and you also see a lot of like fusion. Um, you, you you see fusion of different genres. You see jazz being put into to metal. You see, you you see electronic music being put into metal. Uh, and you can love it or you can hate it, you know. But um, the the good thing about it anyway, I think, is it means there's there's an open road for experimentation and for finding new expressions. And I think that's good. I mean, art shouldn't stand still. Art should always be moving. Uh, so music should always be be uh, moving. Uh, uh, literature should always be moving. Um, uh, painting and art should always be moving. You know, push the boundaries. Try to find new expressions and and your own expressions. And in that way, I think I think metal is at a good place uh, when it comes to these things. Well, Lars, the sad times arrived at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one like me. And to the guy, as the first time we spoke it, in my, just on the written, well, just a written time. So perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans, Metal Little followers, obviously, and obviously the Mexico Metal Fest fans? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to finally coming back to Latin America. We had such a good time there last time uh, around in, in uh, 2017. Uh, and I have to say again, I mean, the, there's nowhere in the world where we find a, a better audience than in Latin America. So looking forward to, to feeling that energy from, from the crowd. And we're going to do everything we can to take that energy and, and, and use that and give uh, a fantastic show back to you guys. So um, looking forward to see you there. <laughs>